Right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. It is the top of the hour, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm Natalie Solden with the Office of Communications and Public Affairs for the Office of Science. Uh, welcome to our informational webinar uh, on scientific discovery through advanced computing, SIDAC for short, uh, with the Fusion Energy Sciences Partnerships. Um, this meeting is being recorded, if you noticed, uh, when you joined. Um, the recording of this will be available on the website along with these slides by next week. We're hoping the slides can get on there earlier for those of us who won't be able to join us today. Um, and I'll drop the link in the chat to where, where those will live. There are closed captions available. You can also enable those by clicking on the banner and clicking on closed ca captions. We will have time for Q&A today. So if you're interested in participating in that, please drop your questions into the Q&A box at the bottom. Um, well, that's it for my logistics. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce Michael Halfmoon, the Program Manager for Theory and Simulation with FES. Michael. Hey, uh, thank you very much, Natalie. Hi, welcome to the, uh, the informational webinar on uh, SIDAC, the FES partnerships. So the FOA was issued on March 8th, and the submission deadline for pre-applications will be on April 7th. The pre-application response deadline is April 14th, and the submission deadline for applications is on May 19th. And just as a disclaimer, uh, the presentation that is, uh, this presentation summarizes the contents of the FOA. And nothing in this webinar is intended to add to, take away, or contradict any of the requirements of the FOA. If there are any inconsistencies between what I say here and what appears in the FOA, the FOA is the controlling document. So just as some background uh, of our program offices, uh, the mission for the, the Fusion Energy Science Program is to expand the fundamental understanding of matter at very high temperatures and densities, and to build the scientific foundations needed to develop a fusion energy source. This is accomplished by the study of the plasma state and its interactions with its surroundings. The Advanced Scientific Computing Research Program mission is to discover, develop, and deploy computational and networking capability to analyze, model, simulate, and predict complex phenomena important to the Department of Energy and the advancement of science. This is an introduction to the SIDAC program. The SIDAC program at the Department of Energy Office of Science is recognized both nationally and internationally as a leader in accelerating the use of high-performance computing to advance the state of knowledge in science applications. Collaborations enabled by the SIDAC partnerships have successfully developed computational solutions to science challenges across the Office of Science programs. Through these, complex scientific or engineering computations have been employed in simulations at a level of fidelity required for the study of real-world systems. The SIDAC program consists of two key components, partnerships and institutes. This FOA is for FES Oscar SIDAC partnerships, focusing on collaborative proposals between fusion scientists and the SIDAC institutes. For more information on the two SIDAC institutes and their teams and capabilities, please see SIDAC.gov. Just a brief uh, scope of the FOA. We have category one topics. These are simulation and algorithm development. This topical area consists of the development and application of individual high-performance computing codes uh, used for modeling confined plasmas. Some uh, examples for the responsive areas include uh, macroscopic plasma stability, uh, such as disruption studies, uh, boundary physics, plasma materials interactions, and the first wall and beyond. Some other subtopics that are related to the performance of the fusion core will be considered as well. 
things like uh, turbulence and transport, plasma heating, physics of energetic ion populations, uh, etc. The second category are frameworks. These are ap applications to the top. This topical area should focus on the integration of the various HBC codes for the purpose of whole facility modeling. Some responsive areas include uh, the development and support of fusion relevant modular flexible frameworks and workflow managers to facilitate integrated simulations on DOE HPC platforms, targeted integrated simulations balancing first principles approaches with high fidelity reduced models, and integrated engineering techniques for fusion pilot plant design. This is in line with uh, the recent administration's bold decadal vision. Some issues and guidance that are common to all areas. Successful SIDAC partnerships should be able to exploit the massive concurrency of the DOE HPC systems and not merely their high capacity. Research activities that are relevant to the topical areas described previously, but are not planning to or not ready to take full advantage of the HPC resources uh, should seek support from other FES program elements. This FOA, <clears throat> sorry, call. This FOA is open to multiple confinement configurations that include tokamaks, stellarators, inertial fusion energy, alternates, etc. Applications addressing issues common to multiple configurations or having the flexibility to model multiple configurations are especially welcome. Partnerships will be expected to collaborate on whole facility modeling integration efforts, such as implementing Category 1 HPC codes into Category 2 frameworks. Partnerships will be encouraged to collaborate with projects awarded under the FES milestone-based uh, fusion development program and other efforts associated with the bold decadal vision for commercial fusion energy. Partnerships are expected to work with the Department of Energy program managers on SIDAC coordination activities. Some details behind the FOA. Some of the key eligibility requirements, uh, universities, private companies, and DOE national laboratories are all eligible to apply. So limitations on the submissions. Applicant institutions are limited to no more than one pre-application or application for each lead PI at the applicant institution. Pre-applications in excess of the limited number of submissions may be discouraged. Applications in excess of the limited number of submissions may be declined without review. The PI on a pre-application or application may also be listed as a senior or key personnel on separate submissions without limitation. Some details on collaborations. Each multi-institutional team must be led by a prime awardee with collaborators as sub-awardees. Only the lead institutions will submit pre-applications and, if encouraged, full applications. Promoting inclusive and equitable research plans, also known as PEER. These will be attached as appendices that are around one to three pages and should describe the activities and strategies to promote diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility in the proposed research project. For a full description of the PEER program, see Appendix 5 in the FOA. The complexity and detail of plans are expected to increase with the size of the research team and the number of personnel being supported. Peer plans are to be evaluated as part of the merit review criterion under the category quality and efficacy of the plan for promoting inclusive and equitable research. The scope should be integral to and tailored to the research project. Applicants are encouraged to consider focusing on areas including but not limited to the composition of the project team and partnering institutions, the research environment, cultivating respectful, professional, and accessible environments, equitable and inclusive implementation of the research project. Some select program policy factors. The selection official may also consider a number of program policy factors in the selection of awards, 
Among these factors are promoting the diversity of supported investigators, institutions receiving awards, and increasing participation of institutions historically underrepresented in the Office of Science research portfolio, and a commitment to improving diversity, equity, and inclusion in the STEM community. Training in providing career pathways for the next generation of researchers, providing placement for postdoctoral researchers, training graduate students in conduct of basic research. For the full list of program policy factors, see page 33 of the FOA. Some information about the, uh, the FOA awards. The total estimated funding is $120 million over the course of four years. That is combined FES and OSCAR. That's the total over these four years. Period of performance is from fiscal year 2023 to fiscal year 2026. The ceiling is $3 million per year, and the floor is $1 million per year. We expect approximately eight to 10 awards uh, that depending on the uh, strength of the applications as well as funding levels. The types of awards, these are not, none of these are going to be renewals. These will all be all new awards and they will be cooperative agreements for universities and private companies and lab authorizations for uh, partnerships that are led by DOE national labs. The estimated award date is within uh, FY 2023. So where to find this information and more, uh, this recording will be posted on uh, science.osti.gov under the FES uh, page uh, under funding opportunities. And the contact information, uh, I'm the FES program manager for theory and simulation. Um, so feel free to email me at michael.halfmoon at science.doe.gov. For more Oscar-relevant questions, uh, feel free to email uh, Lolly Chatterjee. And for questions on submissions to, uh, into PAMS, contact either the PAMS help desk or our program analyst, uh, Marty Carlin. And with that, I believe we open it to questions and answers. Great. Thanks you. Thanks you. Thank you, Michael. That was great. Um, we do have some, a couple of questions that yeah. popped in. So I will just ask them in the order that I have them. Is it expected that the results of the FPP applications from last year will be announced before either of the SIDAC deadlines? We are still uncertain about when the actual announcement is going to be for the FPP applications. Um, we anticipate that it will they will be made before uh, any final decisions on the uh, the SIDAC awards, though. Let me, if I may, if, uh, yes, uh, provide an answer to this question uh, no. in addition to what Michael said. Um, we don't, I mean, the uh, that statement in the FOA about uh, uh, coordinating with uh, teams that will be selected under the milestone program. Uh, this is more like uh, a hands up for the applicants. Um, we probably um, were in the process of selecting the awards, but I don't think that it will be sufficient time for the applicants to include this information to the proposal. So we don't expect uh, the, the applicants to include information about how they would uh, collaborate with uh, the teams or with specific teams. But again, as I said, this is something um, that we uh, provide this information to the community so they're aware uh, when uh, we select the site awards, when we've uh, selected the, uh, the fusion, uh, the milestone awards, there has to be some coordination. So that's all. Thank you. Great. Uh, within PPL, as well as within other institutions, there are people who can provide computational assistance for the codes we are developing. This work is not scientific. Can such efforts such as GPU optimization, for example, qualify for Oscar funding, which is a part of a SIDAC submission? Um, mm. Lolly, would you like to, to answer this one? Okay, um, so mm. um, uh, in principle, 
they don't have to say who, you know, who's going to fund which is not relevant, but our preference is for SIDAC institutes to be partners, but we are going to look at proposals that come in and there is, as Michael said, what's in the FOA is the final word and the FOA says that in the case of um, uh, so, you know, as long as there's no duplication with SIDAC institutes, and if it is essential for the work, then people can, computational people who are not in the SIDAC institutes can put in applications. Great. Is there guidance on the expected ratio between FES and OSCAR funding? Uh no, we we do not uh, disclose the level of funding distributed between the two organizations. Uh, we just we ask that you assemble your partnerships based on who you believe uh, would be the best fit for these positions, as opposed to based on the division of funding associated with them. Um, is it expected that funding levels will be roughly constant each year, or may they increase over time? Well. That I'm not sure that we have any expectation that it's going to suddenly increase. So the current, the estimated level is at uh, around 30 million per year. I'd also add that that's always subject to the appropriation of funds and yes. the availability of funds in a yes. future fiscal year. And trying to predict the outcome of the appropriation cycle is its own sport. Um, uh, $120 million over four years with eight to 10 awards and a 3 million yearly cap. Is there some inconsistency there? Well, I believe that the eight to 10 awards is really just an estimate. It's not necessarily something to what I would. Okay. Okay, I my question is about access to JET JET data for SIDAC simulation. Recent JET DT experiments provide valuable data on alpha confinement critical to burning plasma before performance in FPP. Uh, access to JET DT data for US researchers remains complicated mostly case by case. Can FES help negotiate with JET on a broader access to alpha data for SIDAC? projects. So I'm going to kick that question to John. I'm not sure that we have there's anything that we I, can, I, I don't we can have do. an answer to this. Uh, I don't know if we I mean, this is a uh, international facility, but actually it's going to close down at the end of the year. So uh, I have no idea. I mean, uh, we can uh, you should people shouldn't write proposals mm. assuming that we will negotiate access to the data. That's not a good approach. Okay. Um, are non-lead institutions expected to have a role in the peer plan? I I would argue that every institution in the partnership should have some role within the peer plan and its level of significance may vary depending on whether they're the lead institution or co-leads. Um, should category one applications be in contact with specific encouraged category category two applications as part of the proposal process in response to the expectations to collaborate? Um, I'm not, not too sure on that one, if they should be in contact when preparing their proposals. Uh, John, what would you say to this? We normally don't provide advice to uh, people how to write the proposals. Uh, the, the risk here is that, uh, let's say, a Category 1 application uh, it teams with a Category 2, but uh, the Category 2 is not funded, uh, not selected funding. So what what happens to the Category 1? Category one? So I, I will leave this up to the teams. I know sometimes uh, people, uh, you know, proposals share uh, uh, people from, from 
different institutions, so they can be involved in, in uh, multiple proposals, but uh, uh, it, it's not a requirement. Um, I mean, this is again, just like uh, the other uh, recommendation that we had, uh, this is more of a uh, expectation from us uh, after the awards are made. So uh, perhaps let's say that you are a category one uh, project and then uh, your favorite category two was not uh, supported, there is another one, you're still expected to collaborate with uh, the ones that are going to select for funding. But again, I don't, uh, again, this is up to the teams to decide how to write the proposals. Okay, thank you. I saw that the FES uh, fiscal year 2024 budget request envisions creating four new integrated R&D centers, one of which is supposed to be closely connected to the SIDAC partnerships. Could you please elaborate on the goal of this new center relative to the SIDAC and what the connection to existing SIDAC partnerships might look like? Uh, I would I would say no. We cannot elaborate on it just yet. Uh, news on that will come in the future. Great. Uh, does the prohibition on renewal proposals imply that proposals with similar teams and goals to side Act Four projects may be discouraged? Well, John, what would you have to say about this? No, I mean, uh, yeah. I'd say that uh, the uh, proposals in similar areas will be responsive. Obviously, it cannot be a continuation of uh, uh, the work that was done in, in the previous uh, period. I mean, uh, hopefully we made some progress or so there are new challenges to, to address. Um, but uh, I mean, let's say if we have a uh, an existing project on say core turbulence then it doesn't mean that we won't accept a, a new project in this area but it, it has to be uh the objectives have to be uh, different and uh take into consideration the progress that has been made so far thank you the FOA mentions that it would support basic research to advance understanding rather than to address commercial opportunities but at the same time encourages working on concrete FPP design. Could you clarify if this SIDAC would support studying this specific FPP design of given private company or whether this would be seen as addressing commercial opportunities? Um, I don't know if uh, Mike uh, is probably more appropriate to give an answer to that, but here I believe we interpret commercial uh, opportunity more if uh, like if you have a product that you sell and so on rather than research for us the fpp designs are still under research and development yeah. but, uh, mike yeah, absolutely um the language of the fp of the foa says that the sidac tools may be of use to fpp concepts it doesn't mean that they are going to be specifically producing in actionable sellable FPP design that you can go out and start soliciting VC funding before. We're still in very early stages, <clears throat> um, very much in the basic research scheme. Sounds good. Uh, are you anticipating uh, issuing a broader FES theory and simulation FOA in the next year that projects which that projects which don't have a significant ask Oscar component should target submission to. Uh, currently, we we don't have anything planned for next year. What FOAs will be issued, but that that is a possibility. I would I would leave it. Okay. That. Could you elaborate on what is in the FOA research activities that are relevant to the topical areas described above, but are not planning or are not ready to take full advantage of HPC resources should seek support from other FES program elements? Uh, certainly. Uh, say, for just as an example, like analytic work, things that do not require uh, access to any HPC resources, uh, will not be supported under SIDAC. Okay, correct. 
Does CREDA have to be signed prior to the full application? What happens to funding when CREDA takes too long to sign or if it cannot be signed? Um, Mike, would that be more relevant to you? I'm not certain. Um, who are the host institutions for RAPIDS 2 and FAST Man? Um, Berkeley and Argonne. Berk, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think you would need a CRADA in place to have a technical collaboration um, at the time of application unless uh, you were planning some level of intellectual property development that you wanted to fully delineate at time of application. Although, Hal, if you can comment, uh, would we treat collaboration with the institutes uh, more like a user facility or uh, would they uh, actually have to go full-blown uh, create a SBP? So in, in general, I, I think we want to defer specific questions on, on this topic to, to email, so you should feel free to contact us. I will say that in general, uh, when evaluating applications, we do consider the risks associated with set, you know, with setting up uh, proposed subcontracts and other relationships. But if you have uh, specific questions, then please send us an email. Sounds good. Uh, will proposals only be considered if the major components draw upon Rapid S two or Fast Math? Um, so I can take a try at that. Um... So primarily, the SIDAC calls are supposed to be focused around the SIDAC Institute partnerships so that the tools developed and the expertise within the institutes can be used. Having said that, as I said before, the FOA does have a clause that if you have something very specific that is not duplicated by the institutes and is not available in the institutes, um, you are not... A, you can put that in the proposal. Okay, and does that answer the second question? Must all components of the proposal make direct use of X to scale facilities? Uh, I'll just say uh, quickly. Yeah, that, yeah, that I to answer that. Yeah, so the DOE HPC in the FOA is defined to include not just the X to scale facilities, but also NERSC uh, and, and other resources. Okay, thank you. What level of computational resources can we expect in the level of insight program? Uh, <laughs> uh, receiving a SIDAC partnership award does not preclude any computational resources. Those must be applied for during through their uh, normal channels outside of SIDAC. And that's specified in the FOA as well. Yes, yes, it does. Okay. Um, I'm guessing this might go to Mike Sarkin, but we'll see. Uh, can you clarify the limits on institution and institution and lead PIs? Is the restriction only that one person cannot be lead PI on more than one pre-application or proposal, or are there other limitations? For example, yes. okay. Yes. Yes. The, the limit is one proposal or pre-proposal per PI per institution. However, that PI may serve in any other role on a different proposal or pre-proposal from that organization, assuming that that person then does not become overcommitted. Got it. Perfect. Um, development of reduced models, which are encouraged by this FOA, may need analytical work. Are you excluding that sort of reduced model development? Uh, no. No, I would, I would argue that Proposals that are entirely focused on, say, back of the envelope style work that don't have any HPC components would not be funded under a SIDAC award. Those should seek funding elsewhere. Um, this might be another Mike Sarkin question, but if a DOE lab is going to be a subrecipient on a proposal, will they be able to subcontract themselves to another partner in the proposal, or must they, or must that be done by the lead institution? I believe labs will be funded through FWPs, isn't it? Exactly. We we always fund the labs directly. However, uh, nothing prohibits a group of researchers at a lab from being 
a sub from being proposed as a sub under the prime and simultaneously being a sub under yet another sub, if that's in fact how the relationships and the actual nature of the work being done would orient themselves. But the money will flow directly through to the lab through its contract with DOE. Thank you. Can there be overlap between category one and two? For example, a WFM proposal submitted under two that has some development of new HBC numerical methods to speed up models. Yes, and we, we expect there to be some overlap between the categories. Great. Um, in the past, the subaward versus co-PI relied on the fact that the subawardee performs a particular task for the lead institution, and that was the reason to issue the subaward. Is the same definition going to be applied this time, excluding independent research on the subawards and allowing only targeted ass tasks? There never was any such definition. Uh, a co-PI is an honorific that is associated to individuals based on the role they perform on the award. A subaward is simply a contractual mechanism between one institution and another institution. Uh, you can have co-PIs at the same institution. You can have co-PIs at multiple institutions. You cannot have a subaward to the same institution. Category one lists four subtopics that are described with the same amount of detail as all of category two WFM. Can you give any insight into the anticipated division of awards between the categories and subtopics? So we, we do expect there to be fewer category two applicants than category one going in, but that's, I think that just answers the question. Yep. Um, regarding plans for collaborations between Category 1 and Category 2 projects, could proposals explicitly mention other proposals planning such collaborations? Wasn't this answered before? I thought there was a similar question. I believe it was one of the first ones. Okay. So we've already answered that. So. Yes, yes. Great. Yes. Um, is it possible that a large subcontract with a university or private company, i.e. not a lab, could also be directly funded if all institutions involved agreed this was preferable? Absolutely not, because that is based on a false assumption. You are assuming that a prime pays overhead on the entire value of its subawards, which is a common misperception in the research community. A prime only pays overhead on the first $25,000 of each subaward. Therefore, there is no such savings and we would fund through subawards. That is the last question that I have. Uh, one just popped up. Two just popped up, so we got a couple mm. more. Is work supporting EDER still in scope, or should proposals be focused on FPP-oriented projects? I uh, would have thought yeah. proposals should be focused on work as described in the FOA. Yeah. Great. Uh, just to clarify earlier answers to reduced models, are reduced models excluded from any proposal or can reduced models be part of a proposal with first principle simulation using HPC? Yes, reduced models can be part of a proposal with first principle simulations that use HPC. Is an institutional lead under a sub award considered a PI? No. You are the PI of a subaward, not the PI of a proposal. There is only a limitation on the number of times you may be the PI of a proposal. There is no limitation on the number of times you may be the PI of a subaward. Thank you. Again, we've reached the end of our questions. I'll give it another 30 seconds to a minute.
oops. In the FOA, it says application addressing multiple configurations are welcome. Do we have to have a subaward to other configuration or can we just mention other applications? Um, I'm trying to parse this out. So when we refer to other configurations, like re remaining that you could work, if your concept applies to both tokamaks and stellarators, then that's something that, yes, you would want to mention in the proposal. I, I don't think that you would need a separate sub-award for that. Great. Once again, I think we've reached the end. So I will, is there any expectations that the HPC simulations will be leadership scale, i.e. concurrent usage of say 20% or just non-trivial concurrence? I don't believe we put any restrictions on the HPC simulations in the FOA. Uh, Lolly, could you? chime in on this at all if there's well uh, so we expect them to be using i think there is a line there that they should be uh, using concurrency along with um, efficiency so they should be these are the goal of the sidac program is to enable discovery science through use of advanced computing on hpcs so the goal the primary goal is to be able to utilize the facilities to the best uh, possible way. So now we are not gonna quibble about how much percent, some things may really need a lot of development, uh, but to get there, so in those cases, maybe they wouldn't get to the full percentage, but they would need more work. But the goal, if the goal is to be able to utilize HPC, I think that's sufficient. There is another question, Natalie, on, something about codes and DOE facilities, which Hal may be better equipped to answer. Sure. The question is, are there restrictions against use of ex export controlled or UCNI codes on DOE HPC facilities? So yes, there are restrictions on export controlled and ACNI information on uh, DOE facilities, but it's not necessarily the same set of restrictions for every facility. So if you have specific questions, then please reach out to us an email and we can get you the answers that you need. Should also then throw the customary reminder that the Office of Science is the Department of Energy's basic and fundamental research arm. We do not directly support classified research. We, we support research that is going to be capable of publication in the open scientific literature. Again, we've reached the end of our questions. I'll give it another 30 seconds. Is the IMAS da data schema considered export controlled? I'm, I'm not too familiar with the intricacies of this? Is this the, the, the Eater formatting um, system? Could, yeah, Eater, Eater. IMAS, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, please follow up with an email and I can get back to you on this one because I'm, I'm not too sure if that would be export controlled. I just dropped the last slide information with Thank you. everybody's emails and where the links uh, of this recording and then also the um, slides will live. So if you have any other questions, you can feel free to reach out to the several email addresses that I've dropped into the chat. Um, seeing no other questions, I think uh, thank you all for attending. And if there's nothing else, we will uh, end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.